Today we're taking a look at using mesh to surface to accurately define the outside dimensions of a scanned piston. So this is a really helpful tool set for getting very precise measurements off of a scanned object that may not be very precise itself. So this is a used piston. It does have some wear to it and we'll actually see that in a few different uh, parts of this video. So we've gone ahead and taken this uh, scan piston. We've brought it into the shapes function of mesh to surface and here we're using our uh, magic wand to simply find the area in which we want to uh, best fit a cylinder through. So we're going to best fit that cylinder and once we have that cylinder we're going to go ahead and start locking this uh, piece down to our coordinate system. So we set the center axis of the cylinder to the Z axis of Rhino. That drives this particular cylinder and you can see it actually gives us an RMS value uh, of the actual fit of the cylinder itself. So how accurate that cylinder was which we have uh, 89 microns at the overall tolerancing. So we can see there's a little bit of warp, a little bit of damage to this piece in and of itself. Uh, so once we've got that, now we're gonna go ahead and set a XY plane. So we're just gonna use that magic wand again to select a couple areas and best fit a plane. And now we're gonna drive that plane down to the bottom plane inside of Rhino. And we can see we have that RMS value now is fitting uh, even a little bit further out at uh, 0.018 or actually it's a little bit tighter than the other one at 0.018 just because it's a flat plane versus a cylinder that has a lot of wear but the way that that is driven it's based off of the datum before it so it does take priority uh, or mesh to surface does prioritize which feature is aligned first and it will automatically drive the values of the alignment based upon that. So with that being said, we can very accurately reference in features uh, using this fit tool set in order to uh, get an accurate understanding of, first off, where's the position of our cylinders uh, and planes and other basic prismatic shapes? How are they fitting from the scan file to an actual uh, geometrically correct object so that's where our RMS values come in and then if we want to understand our deviations we'll show that here in this particular tool set where we're coming in and grabbing that inside uh, piston wrist cylinder and we're going to best fit a cylinder through here and actually use the deviation tool to see where this cylinder deviates and why so once we get rid of a little bit of our selection here, we're going to best fit the cylinder through this particular location. And at this point, we're going to see our deviation from our part. So we can see we have an RMS value of a fit value of 0.1415. Uh, so not too bad, but uh, still there's some, some deviation here in our part. So if we go to the deviation tab of uh, mesh to surface we're going to be able to see a color map of where the part falls in and out of whatever tolerance we specify so we'll check out that deviation and we can see if we look inside our part we have these red blue and green values red signifies high blue signifies low and green signifies right in the middle so right now we have our tolerance set to plus or minus 10 microns and we can kind of see how those values fall in and out uh, what we'll notice is the top shape or the top and bottom of these cylinders are fairly accurate, but then the sidewalls uh, have some high and low values. So it's a little hard to pick up here, but you can see where there's some deviation and some ovality to these cylinders as opposed to them being perfectly uh, symmetrical. So once we have accurately defined uh, these basic prismatic shapes. We've locked down this piston into a coordinate system that we can use and understand. 
Now we can start working with this part. So the first thing that we would want to do is create some sort of a uh, revolved shape, right? A basic shape to work off of. So for that, we're going to again use our magic wand and we're going to select the entire outside perimeter of our part. And we'll use that to create a revolved sketch. So we have the basic shape of this part. We're just adjusting our sensitivity uh, for our wand in order to get the right selection that we want to use for this piece. And once we have that, we're going to go ahead and change our shape type over to a revolve. This will automatically go ahead and calculate our part. Now what's great about this revolve tool is we can fit this to a particular direction. So we're going to drive this revolve based around our Z axis. So we're taking the information that we took from before and that, that driving that we did, that fitting into our coordinate system and use it to our advantage when we're creating this part. So when we do that, we can see our point cloud has a significant amount of thickness to it on each one of the locations of our part, whether it's the rings, the oil wiper, the top, or the side walls of this piston, we can see they all have a certain amount of thickness to them. Of course, there are gonna be some more complex organic shapes that we're seeing as uh, what looks like sort of noise here. Uh, but with that being said, for the areas that matter, the ones that we're really concerned about recreating accurately in this particular oper operation, those are in a very nice clean format that we can understand. So with the revolve function, just like any of our other uh, 2D sketch based operations inside of mesh to surface, we have the ability to build out arcs, lines, splines, or any other form of uh, basic 2D shape that we want to use to recreate a 3D object. So in this particular application, what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple of lines and we're going to trim them together as tight lines. We won't be using any sort of fillets or radii. We're just going to leave it as very tight prismatic pieces as that's how we would want to uh, machine this part in the first place. And we're going to show you a couple of different tools uh, that are really great such as the ability to check our deviation uh, from our lines as we're working with this part. Also the ability to create horizontal and vertical uh, correspondence with our pieces so we can lock them into our specific uh, coordinate system so we know that we have everything nice and clean and locked where we want it to be. So you can see we can adjust our deviation options here. We're going to set our tolerance down to 30 microns or so, and we're going to leave it just as a pass-fail and not a gradient. Um, now when we do that, we can see any of our lines that are in red are falling in and out, or are falling out of our tolerance, whereas anything that is in green is within our tolerance. So we can adjust our piece accordingly and create the correct uh, calculations in order to make those objects exactly how uh, we want them to based upon their design intent. Like we see we have some angles here in this particular location and we're going to have uh, a couple other angles and uh, st straight edges on particular locations of our part. Just trying to build this based off of what we imagine the design intent of this part was actually uh, supposed to have within it. So we're just quickly running through this sketch here. I do have it sped up a little bit just uh, for uh, time's sake for the video. And all we're doing is simply sketching out a basic shape that we want to reconstruct as a revolve. And once we create those basic 2D lines, you can see we can just move those in and lock them in vertical and horizontal positions as needed uh, within our part. So once all that's done, uh, we'll simply take this full 2D sketch and we're going to revolve that into our solid object. So we'll slow the video back down now here so we can look at our shape and we can see that revolved surface that's automatically created. 
And once we have that, all we need to do is simply rot uh, throw that over into Rhino. Now, before we throw it into Rhino, we're going to take a look at the deviation. So we're going to turn a gradient filter back on and look at the deviation of this part. And we can see all the different high and low values. So we can see all of the different locations where this part falls in and out of the specified tolerance that we have of 50 microns right now. So this gives us a really good visualization of where some of that wear was occurring, uh, you know, how we recreated this based upon some of this wear. Uh, so when you are reverse engineering parts, you, know, you always have to come back to the design intent. You know, what was the actual purpose of this part and how was it dimensioned according to that purpose? So for this particular application, you can see we made these outside skirts uh, to fit our tolerance, whereas the inside of this part is a little bit higher. Uh, at this point, what we would want to do is we'd want to go back and modify the dimensions of these skirts to make them a little bit larger simply because uh, that's a wear item. You know, those skirts have worn down over time, so we're actually probably uh, a few thousandths in from where that actually needs to be to be a truly accurate part to what this originally was and that's one great thing about this deviation tool is we can visually see that information we can go back and make our modifications accordingly and then continue building our part uh, on from there so now we just throw this piece over into rhino just to show how easy it is to get that prismatic data over there and we do have the scan file underneath it you can see that a little bit as we rotate our part around uh, but that's just a basic overview of how you can do some really simple, uh, accurate reverse engineering uh, using mesh surface inside of Rhino with 3D scanners.